It's new bike day, and hey, who is that hiding in the woods? It's... A Forbidden Druid. This is kind of a dream bike for me, albeit with some pandemic and budget-related compromises. We'll talk about everything that's on the bike, but first, I do just want to say that I bought this bike primarily because... I like it. I know that I don't need a bike this nice, and I certainly know it won't make me a better rider. I just don't want anyone watching this to feel like you need to buy something like this to have fun or shred, because you absolutely don't. Let's get into the details though, because there are definitely some differences between this and my old bike, a YT Jeffsy. The Forbidden Druid is a trail bike with 130 millimeters of travel in the rear and 150 up front. What's special about it is this high pivot suspension design. To make a long and complicated story short, this design allows the rear wheel to travel mostly backwards when it impacts something, which supposedly smooths things out and allows it to carry more speed over chunk. This kind of design is increasingly common on downhill and enduro bikes, but the Druid might actually be the only trail bike to adopt it right now. The other somewhat special thing about it is that you can kind of turn it into a few different bikes. With the Ziggy suspension linkage, it can be converted to a mullet bike and take a 27.5 inch wheel on the back without significantly changing the suspension kinematics. There's also a third party linkage that can be installed to increase the rear travel to more than 140 millimeters. So there are a couple of different ways to make it feel like a different bike without it actually being a different bike. Now let's take a look at some of what's on it because as I said, this is not a stock build at all. Although it's not all parts that I chose either. For suspension, I'm running a Fox 36 up front and a DPX2 in the back. The drivetrain is all SRAM GX Eagle, which I think is a good mix of price and performance. The brakes are Code RSCs with 200mm rotors front and rear. I like the modulation of SRAM brakes, and while Codes with 200mm rotors are arguably overkill for what is primarily a trail bike, hey, I like being able to stop. The dropper lever is the PNW Loam lever, which I did choose, but the seat post itself is an E13 Vario with 180 millimeters of travel. I didn't choose any of the E13 parts on this bike, but I also didn't want to add to the wait time trying to find other stuff, so we'll just see how it works. This post does have tool-free travel adjustment though, which is pretty cool. Speaking of E13, the wheels are also E13 aluminum ribs laced to DT Swiss 350 hubs but I got the 54 tooth upgrade for them, so the engagement should actually be pretty good. In terms of tires, I've got a 2.5 inch Asagai up front and a 2.4 inch DHR2 in the rear. I've ridden both of these tires before and like them a lot, so I think this should work quite well. The DHR2 in the back is the double down casing, which I probably don't need, but it's what they had and I'm happy to ride it until it wears out. Oh, and these are set up tubeless. Yep, I'm finally riding tubeless tires. As you can see, I've also got it set up with a bottle cage and the 207 MTB water bottle. I also threw in this 3D printed retainer and moto foam from Gent Components to keep rocks from getting trapped in this little rock crush zone. All told, it weighs in at 33.6 pounds with pedals, which makes it about 2 pounds lighter than my Jeffsy with those same pedals. Obviously, there are plenty of lighter trail bikes out there, and I could have taken more weight off this with pricier component options in some areas, but to be honest, weight isn't a particularly important factor to me. I would have happily bought this bike with an aluminum frame if Forbidden made one, but they don't. That's all the interesting parts on the bike right now, so let's move on to the why. Why did I buy this bike? Well, to be totally honest, one reason is just that I love how it looks. I absolutely love the blue steel color, although this bike looks rad in pretty much every color that they've released it in, in my opinion. I love the big bold Forbidden on the down tube and the little accents on the frame. Even the name, Forbidden Druid, is just f***ing cool. I first came across this bike on the YouTube channels BCPOV and Van Girl Yuka, and I kind of just fell in love with it. Beyond the looks, I think the high pivot suspension is going to make it great for carrying speed over the rooty terrain in my area, while the trail focused geometry should mean it's still fun to ride on the flatter stuff. And like I said, it also gives me a lot of modification options if I want to change how the bike feels. At some point, I'm definitely going to try to beg or borrow a 27.5 inch wheel and try it as a mullet because I've heard the cornering on mulleted druids feels pretty amazing. And if I want, I could turn it into a mini enduro racer by putting in the cascade components link to increase the rear travel, bumping the fork up to 160, maybe even throwing in an angle set to further slacken the head tube. But of course, that's all theoretical. 
I could talk about this bike all day, but I think it's time to go out and take it for its first ride. For that, you'll have to wait for next week's video, so stay tuned to find out if I just made a huge mistake. I think I'll have a lot more to say once I've gotten some rides under my belt, but in the meantime, I'm happy to answer any questions you have in the comments. Anyway, please like and subscribe if you liked the video and would like to see more. I post new videos every week, and just like I did with the Jeffsy, I'll be doing short-term and long-term reviews of the Druid once I've gotten more miles into the bike. Until then, I hope you get a chance to get outside and ride, and I'll see you next week.